Alrighty, so I just got off the phone with O'Reilly's. Closest parts store to me. I've got other ones, I've got them all actually, but the closest one, he's saying he's got, apparently there's uh, two, and it depends on what your tag says on your fuel pump. So I have to take this off before I go down there. He's got both of them in stock, but as you can see, things are, alright, so first of all, alright, so that's a, that's a cab corner. So this truck, this vintage, those would be missing. This actually has a great body. So the reason I'm telling you that is because uh, the underneath of this, the frame and everything else is pretty much shit. So I'm looking around up there. There's a bolt. Uh, well, that's the carriage size. Well, first of all, look it up there. All right, so you can't even get up in there. They put that shield all the way to the top. You can't even peek in. Uh, to look at something I'm, I'm going to tell you in a second, uh, but looking at these bolts for these straps, oh yeah, pretty angry. You know, as soon as I put a socket on there and try to bust that off, it's going to break off clean, then how are you going to get up in there and do all that? Not to mention, trying to drop this tank with the EVAP, uh, the charcoal canister and all this, you know, all this stuff is just going to break. You know it is. So, my plan is, go up here and uh, chop a hole in the bed. What did you say? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to attack from the top. I'm going to saw a hole up there in the bed. I just need to know where the fuel pump is and hopefully it's between these two rails that we're looking at and not underneath the rail because then it won't be able to slide out, up and out. Uh, so i got to get an inspection mirror up there and hopefully hope for the best. I don't because, you know, you know how it's going to go. I just want to replace a fuel pump. I don't want to get into replacing you know, cross members and everything else is going to break. So, let me uh, let me get a better angle. See if I can get an inspection mirror up there and hopefully that's between the two rails. I can cut the bed out. And I've done this before on a Ford I had once. And uh, it's way easier. Now, again, if this is a newer truck, you know, I'd have a little reserve of doing that. And it is, uh, like I said, decent. The, uh, the actual body's in immaculate condition. But as you're looking around, yeah, we got some rust. Uh, probably gonna replace that guy too. Yeah, why not? Well, maybe not. <laughs> Is that gonna come off? Oh boy. Yeah, they look pretty angry too. Well, this is exactly what a work box was, so if I screw this up, at least it'll be hidden. Uh, so, yeah, and hopefully Uncle Tito didn't mess my measurements up. So I, I drilled two pilot holes from underneath. Uh, these are cross rails here. So I'm gonna, um, let me see, this is, this was, it turned out to be, this is four and three quarters for, in, in case you're going to do this yourself. <laughs> Give you little specs, unlike you can find anywhere else, like for a fuel pump. Uh, so four and three quarters out to, uh, to get a pilot hole here. And then it was, uh, what was it, 16, no, 17 and a quarter. Drill another hole, right? Like from the driver's side box in the corner, coming over, it's 13 and a half to that first pilot hole. 13 and a half, and then, uh, like I said, four and three quarters, we'll get you that hole. Now hopefully I did this right from underneath. So four and three quarters, measure four and three quarters, and between these two, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't really matter. It is uh, 15 and a half, whoop, way off. It is 14 and three quarters. So I'm just going to drill here, or saw this out with a wheel, hope for the best. Like I said, there's a rail, a sub-rail that goes across here. Uh, so where I drew my pilot holes underneath, I went to the inside of both sub-rails, just because I'm going to uh, cut here. So when it, when it comes time to place this piece back on, whether I use a hinge or not for the future, uh, irrelevant. It's going to have some, uh, you know, two cross rails to uh, rest on. Whatever it is, 18. Uh, whatever it is, 15 by 14 square, I'll be able to pull that uh, fuel pump out. I don't know where it's going to be. Could be over here a little bit. Could be over here a little bit. Could be. Let's hope it's in this square. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be cutting this out for no reason. All right, let's get uh, some gear on and cut this out. So I think this, whoop, the hell did I just do? So I think this is going to be the best bet using a wheel as opposed to a plasma cutter because there's a fuel tank under here. Uh, even with the wheel, it's going to create some sparks. But this is that line X, so hopefully not too many sparks. And uh, hopefully I survive this. 
using a plasma cutter. Mm -hmm. You imagine hitting your fuel tank. All right, so let's go. Let's, blow my, let's go to town here. See what happens. Hopefully, I don't want to cut an artery here. Right. I don't see no flames yet. That Linux stuff is crappy. Oh, I gotta take a breather here. It's getting into my nose. Hey, what are these ones? Two tack welds. One here, one here. It's gonna be a little messed. Just gonna have to keep uh, trying to work both sides here. Pound. Work. Oh yeah, bingo! Was his name out? It was a tack weld, right there. Perfect. Good measuring. All right, so let's see if all this stuff will come out. No problem. Uh, actually, before I do all this, I'm gonna blow this out. <laughs> so it's kind of like. Not a lot left of the ring. It's just missing pieces everywhere. But hopefully the tabs are okay. We'll see what happens. This looks like some kind of release so you can bang on it to get, uh, get that ring spun. But, meantime, keep your vacuum handy because you're probably going to need it again. Oh yeah, there's a lot of crap over here. Get that, get that later. So we get these thing of the popper so just try to push up push in <clears throat> yeah so probably just an enormous amount of crud in here try to push these in oh you kind of have to squeeze these two tabs in. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing Oh, yeah. Let's see if this bottom one will come off. Push in. These are kind of brittle. There it goes. That one came off all right. All right. So, we can spin these a little bit. Push in. Oh, there it goes. Alright, not too bad. They look like they're still intact. Hopefully, the new ones, new fuel bubble come with everything. Right? How's this fucker work? Same deal. Just drop my phone. Alright, so this one's a little different. I'm still filming. So, this one, I think if you push in a little bit, just push down on this whole tab. It's got like a C, a C connector. There's nothing on this half, but underneath there's a plastic piece. So if you push this tab down, it should uh, get by this tongue or this lip. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yep. So just push down on that guy, and it changes. Well, you just saw what happened, so anyways. Let's see. These are kind of brittle. I don't want to move them too much. Electrical connector. Move that guy around. Because we'll put these out of the way just a hair. All right. Now. Vacuum out again. I do want to loosen all this rust up. Vacuum before. This is a full tank of gas. 
have the reason I'm doing it this way because <coughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen all this rust up. <coughs> Try not to choke here. And it looks like this guy here, a little release tab on the plastic, right? And then we'll just uh, rotate this counterclockwise. Wouldn't it be nice if we just went only if you live in Florida where they only use crescent wrenches. Um, so let me, let me work on cleaning this up and then I'm just going to take like one of these tabs as I'm releasing this I'm just going to bang on one of these tabs with something. Get in there with a chisel or something. We'll get her done. Getting close. This thing's being pretty gnarly, so no matter where you bang on it, it just falls apart. And uh, we need to save these four tabs here for the new one, because there's a rubber ring under it, so I don't care about this ring, so I'm, at this point I'm just going to try to bust the rest of the rust off. Hopefully this thing will release. Um, and I'll try to vacuum it up before. So, you know what I'm saying, just kind of gnaw this stuff away, get it away from them tabs. Just so corroded, now it's being tough guy. It was just uh, you couldn't hammer on it a second ago. So, anyways, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep trying to work something. Uh, but you can see we need to go counterclockwise, get her to spin a little bit, take it out. Of course, the rust is falling in. This is why I didn't want to take it. You know, from below, because all this stuff, the, the straps, the bolts, everything that's connected to this thing is just going to start falling apart. Uh, so I got a piece of rust in my eye. I was able to get a lip under here, take a pair of vice grips, clamp it on tight, and just whack on the vice grips. And uh, she's free. And what's left of it, anyways? Oh, I don't want that thing to come up. I gotta vacuum here right quick. Back in a hole. I gotta vacuum all this crap. I don't need that shit going in there. Well, there's what's left of the ring. Uh, ooh. Hopefully, the new one comes with a ring. They almost always do. Yeah, we don't have that. Sorry, it's gonna be months. Oh, it's just fat. I was thinking. You know, if you break one of these tabs, one I guess will be no problem, but what if you're rusty, so rusty they break off? I'm thinking a new fuel tank, right? So let's see what's under here. I guess it's inevitable something's going to fall in. Let's see if we get this booger out of here. We're not, there's a rubber ring. A rubber ring. Let's see if there's any crumbs around here. I don't want anything to fall in there. Oh yeah, there's some crumbs. I gotta get these crumbs out of here. There's one over here. Alright, let me work on that. I don't want anything to fall in there. Clog up anything. So it's a little game of operation. Don't touch the sides. No crumbs. I don't know which way the filter is. Oh boy, that sock looks like it's full of crap too. Yeah, hold on a sec. Yeah, let's drop her in a hole. Let's see what happens here. Oh. I, I forgot how this went. Hold on this way, don't forget your rubber. Uh, Rubber gasket, right? I just gotta rotate this way. Oh, look, they make it idiot proof. There's a tab right here, so you can't screw it up. So now I just gotta make sure that uh, rubber seal doesn't get crimped. Let's go and uh, put that ring on. Now there's no up or down on this uh, thing that we're just looking at, so I'm going to assume that the concaved or the the raised part goes up because if you flip it over, there's a nice little flat piece that's going to sit on this. 
So that kind of makes sense to me. Right? Now it's just a matter of banging it home. However, not that this is going to matter because I'm going to do a little rust preventer. I don't think it's going to matter because by the time this ring rusts out, this truck is probably going to be in a crusher. Right, so maybe it's got to go down a little more. Perhaps bang her home. We'll see. Uh -huh. This kind of proved to be the hardest part. Getting that ring back, I don't know if because everything's out of, you know, deformed or whatever. So what I did was um, got it into a tab here with like a pry bar so I can, you know, put pressure down. I tried spinning it with two, you know, two with pressure down, but it got it started. But because if you're banging on one side or the other, this side wants to pop up. It's kind of problematic. So by putting down force on this, getting this thing lined up and hitting it with a hammer, it's going in. So you just got to get one whack at a time, you know, putting down pressure on this. And it's almost there. I got one more, uh, see how that thing needs to be clicked in? So that was the only way I could figure it out. They almost look like they're seated, probably can go one more. At this point, it's probably locked enough now. I ain't got to worry about it, I can start ratting on it. And I think by hitting one side, it wants to force it like this, so it binds it up. So you definitely got to have something pressure. Two people! <laughs> I'm a solo act, so I think in one more whack ought to do it. So down pressure and whack. Yeah, that went, that went a long ways, actually. So that's where the tab is supposed to be. Pretty sure that's tight enough. Uh, let's see if it's seated. It is. It's right against the metal. It ain't going to go any further. Yeah, that was the center one, so this must be the bigger one. Clip these puppies in there. This was the center one. Alright. Hey, nothing broke yet. So there's that. Everything's hooked up. <laughs> well, that's a wrap. I probably should have started with the fuel regulator. Just to begin with, yeah, you see that thing dripping, so I tried to knock off as much rust as I could and pick it out. So I just put a little wrench on there and went to, you know, hold this, turn that. A little spritz came out of the line. <laughs> so the line's toast. And all the lines look toast. But, uh, so now i got to figure this out. A splice a line in there. Oh, boy, should have just left well enough alone. So this is the uh, kit. Comes with a brass thing, and this end is already, uh, you know, has the crimp on there with the O-ring. The other end is exposed. I am going to have to uh, trim this a little bit, but I'm going to use a steel union instead of this uh, brass union. But it's got to go in here somewhere, and then we'll uh, slight little bend. But when you bend this stuff. You know, using a, uh, a a tube bender, it's gonna be like this thing. A little problematic. It might crease because it's steel instead of like uh, you know that softer uh, whatever they call it stuff, nickel nickel crap. Uh, so I just gotta fit this piece in. We're gonna be good to go here. And uh, I don't know if I pointed out before, but I blew. I took the fuel pump line off for this. I blew shop air through the uh, line before I hooked it up to the filter in case there was any crud in there. Just blew it out. So now it should be good to go. I'm going to hook this. Uh, actually, before I hook this line up, I'm going to uh, disconnect it upstairs at the uh, fuel rail or wherever I can, probably a fuel regulator, and blow shop air you know, this way to make sure nothing's in there. And then we'll connect this, see what the fuel pressure is at. So, got that one connected. She goes in the filter. And again, I'm going to have to put uh, some rubber behind this because it is touching. I don't want the rub. And wherever else is rubbing, but uh, ain't no big deal. 
but up here it's not going to click in a thing. I don't want to click it in there anyways because that's where they rust. <laughs> so we're good. Let's go see what the hell the compression is. I mean the uh, pressure is. Alright, let's see if we got any kind of prime first because we changed the electrical thing. Hopefully it works. But let's see what kind of prime we got. That's a wrap. Uh, if you're doing a fuel pump and you don't want to drop the gas tank like, like in this situation because of rust or whatever, there is an alternate way you can do it. You, if you have a few buddies, you can you know, take the bed off itself, it's just four bolts in this particular model, and uh, a couple electrical connectors and a filler neck. Uh, that'd be probably the easiest way to go, access to everything, uh, but in this case, cutting a hole there, I didn't have a problem with it. It's a 2002, you know, it's not like it's a new truck, uh, and I did repair it with a uh, uh, a couple of pop rivets and uh, epoxy so it's sealed up and the truck box the work box on the back goes over the top of it so you don't even see it so anyways that's uh, one one way to do it alternate way uh, other than you know trying to do it the traditional way dropping a tank but again this truck's 20 years old if you got a vehicle 20 years old well good luck with that you're going to be getting into more things than you need to anyways that's all i got thanks for watching that is literally the dirtiest fuel i've ever seen um it's like motor oil I'm just draining out of this uh, fuel filter, so I'm hoping this is my problem. Now, anyways, that does look like motor oil. It's supposed to be gas. The way it's coming out of there is just like chocolate milk. So maybe the, the uh, fuel pump was okay on the old one. Just going through this fuel pump, it's blocked in there. <laughs> okay, so if you watch this to the end here, this is probably what the problem was, why the truck was starving for fuel. Probably should have started with the fuel filter. <laughs> but it is what it is. Got a new fuel pump in here anyways. Uh, anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.